This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I don't know if you've seen the actual bomb that's gone off on the internet that I like to call the X106, but shit's getting crazy on the internet. People cannot stop talking about this camera, and I remember with the X100V, it was the same thing. The X106 is actually holding a new record for the most pre-orders of a camera ever. If you were, you know, not living under a rock last year, you probably remember the absolute mania that was trying to get your hands on an X100V because pre-orders were super backed up. Fuji did not know what was going to hit them. I didn't know what was coming. You didn't know what was coming. The price on marketplace for these cameras absolutely skyrocketed. I looked for a X100V in a different province than I knew I was going to, and I found one there that was slightly cheaper, but it was still, make no mistake, like several hundred dollars more than what they cost retail. And that's just silly. And the even funnier part is that now the X106 has come out. Everyone and their mother and weird uncle and nephew and guy who works at the gas station you always go to and barista at the coffee shop you always go to is posting their X100V on Facebook Marketplace. And you know what infuriates me is now the pricing seems kind of fair. Now it's just priced like regularly. So I've lost money on buying this, which I mean it happens with cameras, but it was bananas to get this. And if you remember the video I made about getting this, I said a long time ago, I just don't really understand why I would choose the X100V for me. And I ate my words. I have loved this camera for the last year. This is not like a one year of using the X100V, but I do love this. I am keeping it Fuji. A1 job, I'm pleased. So by the title of this video, I'm not here to bash the X106, okay? I love the camera. Do I have the camera? No. Would I love the camera? Sure, if I could get my hands on one. But the thing is, there are reasons I'm gonna get into for which I will not be purchasing this camera. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. Let's just be clear, this is a very dope camera. Both the X100V and X106, both fantastic cameras. I'm very excited about the X106, like everyone you know is. But there are some reasons I'm having trouble justifying the upgrade, and that's what I'm gonna get into in this video. This isn't a review, but just as a refresher, I'm gonna go through some of the big new specs here. If you've already seen them, I don't blame you, just maybe go click ahead because there are chapter mar markers in this video. You're welcome. So we've got the same fixed lens here. It's a 23 millimeter lens, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent, f2.0. We've got the same body. Apparently some little things have changed here. I can't show you the physical one, but from what I've seen online, we've got a slightly repositioned drive and delete button on this camera. It's right here. Apparently it's further away from the viewfinder and more like below the hot shoe now. So that seems like where it is now, but I don't know if that's a major issue. This is no longer red, this. Apparently the tripod mount on the bottom has moved a little bit more forward and the number of screws on the base plate is less than before. The X106 is a little bit heavier and we'll get into why in just a moment. So what's new? Well, there are a couple really big ones, but one of the biggest is the megapixels. So the X100V is 26 megapixels. X106 is 40 megapixels. So that is a considerable amount more megapixels and that is great when it comes to using the teleconverter 
color setting because before cropping in on 26 megapixels, it's not ideal. It's not really heavily croppable. So if that's a setting you make use of a lot and something you want to reach for, this is definitely going to make a big difference for you because you are, you know, you're sitting with that fixed lens. You, this is not an interchangeable lens camera. It is not meant for that. But if you want the opportunity to crop in your photos, now you can. Ibis, this is the second big one. If you are shooting video, again, we want some internal stabilization. If you're even just walking around or shooting at a lower shutter speed and your camera isn't totally steady, like you're not fixed in place, maybe you're on a boat, maybe you're moving really quickly, the IBIS is gonna come in handy and just be that extra backup or that extra insurance for you to give you that super stable photo that you're looking for. The X100 6 now has different subject detection modes, so that's for animals. I mean, in the previous X100V, we had people and I, but now we've got birds, automobiles, planes and trains and all of the things, which is very helpful. I would say this is a setting that everyone can appreciate, but I'll talk about why it's not necessarily something I need for this camera in just a moment. So in terms of video, we've got 4K up to 30 frames per second, but then we have 4K 60 as well, but that does come with a little bit of a crop. Then we have 6.2K at 30 frames per second, but again, that's with an additional crop in even further. And now we have up to 240 frames per second at full HD. So you can shoot some better video with this. Isn't enough for me as a second video camera or even a exclusive video camera? I'll talk about that too. Something they added that's really interesting with the X106 is that they increased the bit rate. So you've got 422 10-bit color. And I think that's really interesting because when they jumped from 26 to 40 megapixels, that would lead me to believe that we are pushing in the direction of improving this camera for photo. Even when they added IBIS, I'm thinking, okay, that's something we're improving with this camera for photo. Then we are increasing some of the video capabilities or improving some of the video capabilities, I should say. And then we're adding 422 10-bit color. What, what is this now? Are you trying to make it a hybrid? Because it's still not quite there for video. You can shoot a little bit of video, I suppose, but the intention of this camera and what I use it for and what I think a lot of people use it for is not something that's compatible with some of the things that they're adding here in my opinion. Something else that they've added here that might be a nice little add-on for you is one more recipe. So it's called Rila Ace and it's modeled after Rila 100 film. So basically it's supposed to, Luna, can you not use the litter box right now? My cat has runny poops. A stool sample is at the vet. She's got probiotics. She's got better food. Please don't be concerned. Luna, mommy's working. Good job. So it's supposed to be like the classic chrome recipe, but with more saturation. For me, this is like a cool extra thing to have and would be fun to try, but it's not enough of a reason for me to go and buy a whole new camera. Okay, so finally, the part you've been waiting for here is why I will not be purchasing the X106. It really comes down for me as to why did I purchase this camera in the first place? It was small, it was lightweight, it was something I could shoot with very intentionally as it resembles the process of shooting with film and using the different recipes. It has a fixed lens, so I don't have to worry about changing the lens. I've got what I've got here and that's it. 26 megapixels is plenty for me. And the idea with having this and having this strap was that I can bring this along, document my life, take some daily travel photos, take photos with friends at dinner if I want to use the flash. They look really cool and have those really interesting recipes that you can apply. They're ready in JPEG form immediately if I want to share them with people and there's no editing required. If I want to, I can, but I don't have to. This has also been super handy for me with doing daily stories and uploading them directly to my phone and then sharing them on stories and it's just a high quality way to document my life. So this is supposed to be like a daily photography camera. Like this isn't my work camera. This is my fun living camera, if you will. I can take some really beautiful photos with it and I have. And actually when I have been traveling, this has been great to have as my kind of like wide angle body always on me, even though it's a 35 millimeter equivalent, still wide enough. And then on like my A7R4, 
four, for example, I'll have like my 100 to 400 or an 85 millimeter or something a lot tighter. And then I don't have to keep switching lenses. I kind of have both on the go. So no, I haven't just used this for documenting my life. It is high enough quality that I can use it for some of my professional work as well. As far as the autofocus settings, I normally use zone focus with this because I'm a little slower shooting with it. I'm more intentional. I'm walking around a town in a different country or like I said, out to dinner. I don't need to be super fast with this. Although having those autofocus settings obviously would be really nice. In terms of video, I never use this for video. That was never my intention. I have other cameras with other settings that truly just blow this one out of the water. They've got 422 10-bit color. They've got IBIS already. I don't need that in this body, especially because so many of those video settings also include a crop and this is crop sensor and those are full frame. Like you get what I'm going for. IBIS for photography, again, would be really nice, but how I'm normally taking photos with this, I'm not moving a lot. I'm not that concerned about getting a ton of motion blur because of how I've normally been taking my photos with this. Like I said, I'm walking around, I'm on stable ground, it's nice and bright. Sometimes when I'm shooting in low light, I do notice that, but I like to adjust my settings manually. I don't normally use aperture priority or anything, so I'm adjusting for it as I go. And because this is something I carry around daily when I'm traveling, I don't want it to be super heavy. And the new one is a little bit heavier because because they've added IBIS and there really isn't a way for them to not do that. In doing some of my research on the X106, I actually came across a video from Matt Granger and he made a really interesting point. They've made a ton of improvements with the series of these cameras and they've truly taken a camera that everybody loved and they just keep tweaking it, making it that little bit better, that little bit better every time. And so they have upgraded many of the features like the sensor quality and the bit rate. However, one thing they have not changed in order to keep up with some of those settings is the lens. This still is not a 2024 quality lens, as he put it. That's also why I'm interested to wait for the next iteration of this, the X107, and to see if that's the change they've made with that model. And then I could see that being a big enough reason for me to switch. And finally, the market is flooded with people selling their X100Bs, so I just don't see the point in contributing to that and then waiting forever for the X106. I'm going to rock my X100B for a little bit longer. Let me know what you guys think. I have a ton of friends who are picking up the new one and a ton of friends who just aren't really sure what to do and are thinking about keeping the old one too. So where do you stand? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give it a like down below. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. I suppose we'll leave links to both. I can't. It's discontinued. I forgot. This is discontinued, by the way. So you have to get the new one if you don't have either. Leave a link to the X106 in the description below if you disagree with me completely, or maybe I've sold you on it. You're welcome. I do think it's a great camera. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe let me borrow it. That would be nice. Okay, I'm gonna go to bed now and watch the bear.